Majority Leader. Deputy Majority Leader. Order. <laughs> Order. Order. Order, Senator Wambua. Order. I said order. The House has only one majority leader at a time. So don't, don't, don't bring uh, newspaper issues here. Order. Do we have the majority leader? Deputy majority leader. Any chairperson from the majority side on behalf of the majority leader? Mr. Speaker, we will bring this to the attention of the committee uh, so that they can expedite uh, the response required by the In members. two weeks, in provide two weeks. the response in two weeks to Senator we'll Hanin. Information to the attention. In 14 Speaker. days, Thank yes. You. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Mahmoud. Okay, Honorable Senators, I propose that the Pandemic Response and Management Bill, Senate Bill Number 6 of 20, 2020, be read a second time. So, Honorable Senators, before we proceed for debate, I have a communication to make. I have received communication from the Jubilee Coalition from the Office of the Deputy Minority. Whip, Senator Irungo Kangata, dated 11th, May 2020. The letter of communication was accompanied with the following documents, minutes of the Jubilee Parliamentary Coalition meetings, dated 11th, May 2020, which is a record of the proceedings of the meeting, together with resolutions, two duly signed list of senators who attended the above indicated meeting, three post-election coalition agreement between the Jubilee Party of Kenya and Kenya African National Union, four, register of political party certificates dated 8th May of May 2020. The minutes show that 20 senators attended the meeting and re resolved unanimously to one, remove the current leader of majority, Senator Kipchumba Murkomen, in accordance with standing order 19.5, B, remove the current majority whip, Senator Susan Kihika, in accordance with Senate standing order. 19.5. C. Elect Senator Samuel Bogisho as Senate Majority Leader. D. Elect Senator Irungu Kangata as Senate Majority Whip. E. Elect Senator Haji Farhia Ali as Senate Deputy Majority Whip. I'm satisfied with the changes that the changes were made in accordance with standing, Senate Standing Order 19.1, 2.3, 40.0. 5 and 7 and miss the threshold required understanding order 19 5 there having been a majority of votes accordingly i wish to communicate to the house that the majority has effected changes which shall now take effect as follows senate majority leader senator samuel bogisho two senate majority whip senator irun kangata three senator majority whip senator haji farhia for avoidance of doubt, Senator Ad, uh, Aden Dulo, Fatuma continues to be Senate Deputy Majority. Leaders no change who are made affecting the officer. I will make a, a, a reasoned ruling in due course. <laughs> Senator Mohamud. Uh, I just saw a communication, so I, I mean, uh, something about the uh, political parties deputy tri tribunal that uh, whatever was agreed between Kanu and Jubilee was null and void and she left to be determined at a later date. Yes. I don't know whether it has come to your attention, Mr. Speaker, sir. That's why I said I'll, I'll give a reason the uh, ruling in due course. Mr. Speaker. Senator Cherio. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I appreciate uh, the decision that you're about to make. But this is uh, extremely unfortunate. Mr. Speaker, these are extraordinary times. It calls upon you to stand firm and be the speaker that this House elected you to be. To arbitrate, be fair, be firm, and resolute in defense of this institution. I have information in my position 
Mr. Speaker, and I'd wish to know, it will be proper before the Speaker communicates such a decision that this House is furnished with the alleged minutes of the meeting, who are present, who signed, because we have supplied your office this morning with a list of 20 senators from the Jubilee Party that have signed and said they were not party to that meeting. Number one, Mr. Speaker, Jubilee has 34 senators in this House. We only have a coalition agreement with PDR. That makes it 35. If 20 senators sent a letter to your office this morning urging you and reminding you that they were never party to these changes, then where did these numbers that are allegedly being used to make these changes come to? Secondly, Mr. Speaker, I am aware that you are also in possession of a letter from the whip of the, minor, of the majority side informing you of, an inform of, an, of, an, uh, of a court order that was issued this morning, interim orders from the PPDT informing you that that decision that was made to enter Kanu and Jubilee into a post-election coalition is null and void and stayed because it was non-procedural. How you choose to treat this information, Mr. Speaker, is out there for history to remember that at such a time as this, when the country was, was faced with such a serious pandemic as we are dealing with, people sat somewhere, made forgeries, and we are about to sanction it as a house. We will go down so badly, Mr. Speaker. I plead with you, as you make your decision, to tell us the truth about what happened. Establish for us who attended this meeting, who are these alleged 20 senators that met, and also tell us why there's a contravention of standing order number 19-4 that directs that the, it is the whip of the majority side who writes to you. So we would wish to see this letter from whip Senator Susan Kihika informing you of these changes. I rest my case, Mr. Speaker. Senator Pareno. Mr. Speaker, sir, we have uh, standing orders in this house. The Speaker has made his pronouncement. The Speaker has made his, his ruling and his findings. And uh, is it in order for Senator Cheruyot to purport to question a communication and a decision of the Speaker? Because in his submissions, what he's trying to do is to question your mandate which mandate is given by the same orders that govern him and govern this house. S Senator Morgoman. Thank you, <clears throat> Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it is uh, with tremendous respect that I make uh, the following comments. <clears throat> First, Mr. Speaker, I respect this House, I respect the rules of this House, I respect the Constitution and the standing orders. Mr. Speaker, uh, we have received uh, your communication. Note that we were not aware of the machinations and the schemes that were happening. But Mr. Speaker, I am shocked by yourself. This morning, I came to your office with a Senate Majority Whip, and we served you with an order that was procured after an application where the major, minority, majority whip was part of the application. In that application, Mr. Speaker, the court is very express, the tribunal is very express, that Mr. Speaker, he stayed any decision that was going to be made based on the purported coalition agreement between Kanu and Jubilee. That is really weighty. Mr. Speaker, when the history of this house will be written, and your time as the second speaker under the new constitution. That very decision is going to be very key. Number two, Mr. Speaker, I stand here knowing for sure that if you have 20 numbers and the court has ruled that three of them from Kano cannot participate in the elections, Mr. Speaker, meaning you would only remain with 18 members of Jubilee, 17 members of the Jubilee side, which Together with PDR, we formed 35, meaning that the majority of the remaining members were against the uh, decision. If you go further, Mr. Speaker, when you ruled on the case of Orengo replacing, uh, Senator Orengo replacing Senator Wetangula, you made it clear about the form of the communication 
that the communication can only come, and the standing orders is expressed, standing order 19. It can only come from the whip if it is in the removal of majority leader, and the majority, le and the major, uh, majority leader if it is coming from the removal of the whip, anticipating that there would be no situation where you remove both of them at the same time. Mr. Speaker, the, these are very important positions. It's not about my position. And if, Mr. Speaker, you have made your determination, you have been pushed to a corner to make that decision. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to say this. Order, Senator. M Mr. Speaker, What's your point of order? Mr. Speaker, I am Just the one who is yeah. affected by this decision. So yeah. if my colleagues can give me that small moment of respect, because, Mr. Speaker, they will have the rest of the two and a half years yeah, to but, celebrate uh, this decision. But, uh, but also, you should, uh, you should uh, note what you say. When you say I was pushed to a corner. If, Mr. I Speaker, I am not saying you are pushed by anybody. I've just said if the evidence before you pushed you or whatever pushed you to a corner and you've made a decision, and a decision that is not reasoned, it is not giving the reasons, it doesn't take us the names, it doesn't tell us what you do with the, de with the tribunal decision that came before you, you are saying you will have a re reasoned now uh, uh, decision later. Allow me then to say this, Mr. Speaker. When I was a student leader at the university, one of the things I went through was a training on leadership. And I remember only one very important uh, aspect of leadership. That the moment you take a position, whether it is the speaker, the majority leader, or even as a senator, the moment you take that position, always prepare yourself for the day you leave that position. Mr. Speaker, I am not worried and I have no problem not being the majority leader. What was only being defended on this side was the fact that we must follow the rules. Be it as it may, Mr. Speaker, if finally you will disregard the law and make a decision that I'm not going to be the majority leader in this house, what I can only say is that I want to thank my colleagues who voted for me, supported me throughout, and who have continued having faith in me, even amidst a lot of intimidation from the executive. Number two is to thank my staff, about six or seven staff of the office of the majority leader, who will quickly, Mr. Speaker, this afternoon, the only people, the only people that are in my mind at the moment, Mr. Speaker, is not me. It's my staff. And I know they have done a tremendous job. They have loans. They have commitments to their families. This afternoon, they are going to lose their jobs by a stroke of a political conmanship, Mr. Speaker. So I feel for them. And Mr. Speaker, I want to say this, that I want to thank them for their support. I will stand by them as a, as a person. I, am, I have just started my political life. I have only been eight years, actually seven years in politics, Mr. Speaker. I believe this is just but the morning of our political careers. There will be a brighter future. I want to tell them that they should take heart. We will come back and come back big, Mr. Speaker, and they must be able to continue uh, 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 looking forward to that great future. Lastly, Mr. Speaker, I wish during this time of coronavirus that our focus, Mr. Speaker, we were told not even 15 people should meet, yet we are told that about 20 people met in State House to plot out to remove Murkomen. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, if the only agenda for our party jubilee has been wrangles from 2018 up to now, not focusing on delivery of services, if the greatest achievement of the President of Kenya is to demonstrate to the people of this country that I have removed my majority leader, I'm a big man. Mr. Speaker, the President is already a big man. I am just but a son of a squatter, born and brought up in Embobut. To be a subject of his discussion uh, over and over again, I want to say, Mr. President, now therefore deliver for the people of Kenya. Murkomen is out of the way. If I was your stumbling block, deliver for the people of Kenya. Allow all the bills that Mr. Speaker has been signed unconstitutionally, and which Mr. Speaker, this House went to court to challenge, allow those bills to come to Senate. Mr. Speaker, I want to tell the President, stop lying to the Senate. You told us you will give us oversight fund. 
Bring the oversight ban to the Senate if Murkomen was that's, the stumbling block. It is only Mr. Your, speaker. Order, order, Senator, if I was Moreno. the only reason, order, order, Mr. Order, speaker, order. that Senate was not being order, protected, order, order, I want to say, Mr. Speaker, that order, it is Murkomen. time. Order, order, Senator. Mr. Speaker, it there's is a, time. There's a point of order. There's I a point want to of conclude, order. Mr. No, speaker. There's a point of order. Order, order, Senator Murkomen. Please, please. Please, please, yes. What's your point of order? Then you you conclude, Senator Murkomen. Mr. Speaker, What's was, your point? I was on a point of order, Mr. Speaker. So if, if order. Not, yeah, no, I stood on a point of order. No, I thought. Okay. Mr. Speaker, again, we are guided by rules of this house. Is it in order for Senator Kipchumba Murkomen to to impute on the conduct? Codmanship on the conduct of the President of the Republic of Kenya. I never said it. If he wishes to, if he wishes to accuse the President, I then it is time for him to make a substantive motion to that effect. Is it in order for him to discuss the President and his conduct? Yes, Mr. Senator. Speaker, I have not discussed the conduct of the President. I know the rules of this House. The President promised this House oversight fund. Mr. Speaker, two and a half years down the line, he has not delivered. The President promised that in this House, Mr. Speaker, the signatures, Mr. Speaker, of, of, of his bills, Mr. Speaker, what's must come to both Houses. He has not delivered. Senator, Senator Mr. Speaker, Senator, the respect Senator, of this Senator, House Senator, Senator, Senator. can be more achieved okay, Senator, Senator, if I pave way for that respect order. to be achieved. A point of order. Mr. Speaker, at the end of the day, whatever our passions, whatever our anger, the rules of this House must be observed. I had Senator Murkomen state unequivocally that the president should stop lying to the nation and he should now deliver the things he, he itemized. Mr. Speaker, is it in order for him to run away from his statement and, 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 and try to persuade us that he didn't make those statements? Mr. Speaker, I urge you that if he cannot withdraw the statement now, he will look at the, the proceedings of the House in the afternoon or tomorrow, and he should accordingly withdraw and apologize. Mr. Speaker, I didn't say the President lied. So, so uh, Senator Murkomen, just yes. uh, to inform you, uh, standing order 96, uh, contents of speeches, neither the personal conduct of the President nor the conduct of the Speaker or any judge nor the judicial conduct of any other person performing judicial functions, nor any contact of the head of state or government or the representative in Kenya of any friendly country or the conduct of the holder of an office whose removal from such office is dependent upon a decision of the Senate shall be referred to the two adversely, except upon a specific substantive motion of which at least three days' notice has been given. So I think. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Speaker. That. I, I am aware of the standing order. I am very clear in my debate. I am within the debating rules. I just want to conclude by saying this that I hope, Mr. Speaker, by uh, removing me and Senator Susan Kika, and procedurally and illegally and unconstitutionally, it will improve the relationship between this House and the National Assembly. It will also improve, Mr. Speaker, the executive promises to this House. Then I hope, Mr. Speaker, the President will not sign any other bill that, Mr. Speaker, concerns counties that doesn't come through this House. Mr. Speaker, I will remain focused on the rule of law, on the things that affect Kenyans, on defending the people of Elgeo Marakwe, at whom I am so grateful that they elected a son of a squatter to come to this House. And, Mr. Speaker, to my adversaries, I want to tell them you can celebrate you can cheer, you can be happy, I will be coming back, and coming back big. And Mr. Speaker, with all those remarks, I just want to say this, I know you will say the conduct of the Speaker is being put in doubt. You are my friend. I've known you for long. You've been a DC in my place. I knew you when you were governor. I moved the motion, I, I mean, I, I defended you here when Orengo and Wetangula wanted to bring certain documents against you. Mr. Speaker, this is not your decision. You made this decision under duress and undue influence. And I'm order, sorry you had order, to do order, it. Order, order, Thank Senator, you, Mr. Speaker. Order, Senator Murkumen. Mr. Speaker, order. on a point of order, 
those remarks about the speaker. And I've been in this house many years. And I've had wars with speakers. I've had, had a war with Caparo, Senator Caparo, but never, never, never in the history of my life in Parliament would I address the speaker in the manner in which you have been addressed. Mr. Speaker, if Mr. Murkoman, Senator Murkoman, wants to proceed to be part of this House, he should have no alternative but withdraw those remarks that he has ma made about you personally. Because when you sit on that chair, the, pa the person, Ken Lusaka, is not the equivalent of the Speaker of the Senate. He cannot undermine the authority of your office. So, Mr. Speaker, I, I, I demand that he withdraws and apologizes. And by the way, Mr. Speaker, we are going to speak on this issue since the other side has responded. We are also going to speak on, on this issue, the legality uh, of the decision and, the, and, and whatever they've also been doing, we are going to address those issues. And I hope this continues in the afternoon. Senator Linturi. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity uh, to weigh in to this matter. Uh, Mr. Speaker, some 12 years ago, or there about, there was once a great man, a great man that I personally miss, who happens to come from your area. As a speaker, that time, this country was faced with serious problems. And Mr. Speaker, at that particular time, because of the opportunity, courtesy of the people of the Wegembe South, when I served them as a member of parliament, very weighty decisions were placed before him for determination. When I look around this house, I think it's only Senator Orengo and Mahmoud that was a member of parliament then. And Mr. Speaker, the question was what decision should have been made for the okay. greater good of the country? Okay. Or Honor, Honorable Senators, sorry to interrupt you. It's now 12.30 p.m. Time to interrupt the business of the Senate. The House therefore stands adjourned until today, 2.30 p.m., when we continue. I hope I will get my time in the afternoon. Yeah, you will. Okay.